Hey guys, it's Crazy Dash here. As I promised on my Metrolink Animal Valley Line suggestion video, we will be leaving California to cover Sounder Commuter Train. This train line has given me quite some interest because of its amazing scenery and interesting rolling stock. Be aware that since Sounder is not a local train of mine, I may say incorrect information in this video. If I do, feel free to correct me in the comments. If you have a suggestion for a route I should cover in the future, feel free to post a suggestion in the comments as well. I do not own any footage within this video. All rights go to their respective owners. Anyways, let's get right into the video. For those who are not familiar with this route, Sounder Commuter Rail is a commuter train located in Seattle, Washington. The line is owned by BNSF on behalf of Sound Transit. The total route length is 83 miles and has a total of 12 stations. Sounder is consisted of two lines, the North Line from Seattle to Everett, and the South Line from Seattle to Lakewood. The North Line is 35 miles long and the South Line is 48 miles long. The max speed on both lines is 79 miles per hour. Luckily, both of these routes fall within the max of a 50 mile route. This means that no sort of route shortening is needed for either line. Each route brings a very different experience as the South Line has a commuter route feel to it, while the North Line has a Pacific Surfliner feel to it. It is mostly sheer preference over which Sounder line is better. Sounder also has a maintenance facility outside of King Street Station that is owned and operated by Amtrak, where both Amtrak and Sounder trains are, both are maintained and stored. There are also many different possibilities for DLC for both of these lines. I will talk about each of them separately. Now that you have a basic idea of what Sounder is like, let's talk about what would come with the base route. The core route would come with all the current operating locomotives and rolling stock on the line. Sounder's rolling stock consists of the EMD F59 PHI, the MP40 PH-3C, Bombardier bi-level coaches, the Bombardier bi-level cab car, and the Bombardier CEM bi-level cab car. The F59 PHI on Sounder is modified to have an upgraded engine to comply with Tier 3 standards, along with being much more fuel efficient. The MP40PH came into service after three of them were given to Sounder to comply with Tier 3 standards. Numerous train operators showed interest in the CEM cab car entering service in 2017 as they are more crashworthy than the old cab cars. They also provide improved visibility, safety features, and comfort for crews. The F59PHI and the Bombardier bi-level cab car both use a K5LA horn. The MP40PH-3C uses a WAPTEC horn, and the CEM cab car uses a strange K5LA horn. Both of these horns are not well liked by the community. All of these trains use a bell you would hear on the MP36PH-3C on Peninsula Corridor, so this can be reused. Here is a sample of these trains' sounds.
Sounder has a total of 8 round trips per day on the weekdays. Most of the trains operate during peak hours in the mornings and evenings. Most inbound services to Seattle are in morning peak hours and outbound services out of Seattle are in evening peak hours. Additional services are inputted on weekends for special events such as sporting events for the Seahawks and Mariners. Implementing DLC to this route would make a lot of sense to give people more to do on the line as Sounder has much less timetables compared to a route like Peninsula Corridor or the Bakerloo line. Now we will talk about each route and what they deliver in terms of scenery along with statistics. First we will talk about the longer route of the two. The South Line goes from Seattle's King Street Station to Lakewood. The total route distance is 48 miles and contains a total of 9 stops. Trains on this line use 7 passenger coaches. This route has a lot of major landmarks along the line, mostly within the Seattle area. Some notable locations along this line are the Hood Street Reservoir, Staff Pro and Lay Mays Car Museum, the, po the Poyallup River, Tacoma Bay, Mount Rainier, Chief Leschi School, Emerald Downs Raceway, the legendary Boeing Airfield, Harbor Island, Safe Code Field, and CenturyLink Field. This line has so much to see in, in the Seattle and Tacoma areas. This is what would make the route stand out from other commuter routes as this route has lots to see during the commute through Washington. The scenery is very diverse with the famous landmarks around the South Line, along with going through lots of rural and residential areas as well. The North Line goes from Seattle King Street Station to Everett. The total route distance is 35 miles long and stops a total of 3 times. Trains consist of 2-3 passenger coaches on this line as there are much less stops along the line compared to the South Line. This, this route is much different than the South Line as the North Line hugs the coast of Washington giving amazing views. Some notable locations along this line are the numerous piers and cruise terminals along the coast of Seattle, crossing over the Salmon Bay, the ship on the beach, East Waterway and Jetty Island, and finally, the Washington Coastline. Although this line doesn't have as many major landmarks as the South Line, the scenery on this line is far different, bringing a completely diff different driving experience. Most of the following DLC operates on both the North and South Lines. One of these operate options could come with the base route. There are a few different freight operators that deliver freight in Seattle, the main operators being BNSF, Union Pacific, and Canadian National. If there are any other operators that go to Seattle, please let me know in the comments. As I have mentioned in my Pacific Surfliner route suggestion video, BNSF is believed to not have the proper licensing with Dovetail Games to be able to sell BNSF DLC outside of the United States. If they eventually get the proper licensing, adding BNSF would be a great addition to this route. The main locomotives BNSF uses for mainline usage are the ES44, ST70 ACE, and the ED44 C4. BNSF also has locomotives for shunting and shore hauls around Seattle such as the GP38 and the SD40-2. On Union Pacific, they mostly use the ES44, the SD70 ACE, and the SD70M. On Canadian National, they use the ES44 and the SD70 ACE. There are many freight yards along the Seattle subdivision. The main yards located across both lines are in Tacoma, Auburn, Kent, Tuquila, Everett, and various locations in Seattle. There is a branch off between Tacoma and Tuquila that I believe only Union Pacific operates on. Please correct me if that is not true. If I'm wrong, what operates on that branch along with what's the branch's purpose. Dovetail Games may not add Union Pacific if they do not want to add this branch off as part of the route. BNSF would make the most sense to add to this line as part of the base route since they own many yards within the Seattle area. The Coast Starlight is a long-distance passenger train that travels from Los Angeles Union Station to Seattle King Street Station. The train stops twice along the South Line, stopping at Tacoma Station and Seattle King Street. The Coast Starlight could come with two different locomotives. The main locomotives would be the P-42DC. 
It could also come with the General Electric Dash 8, which also is used on the Coast Starlight. Both of these locomotives are highly requested in Train Sim World 2, so adding the Coast Starlight would be a great way to add them into the game. It would also come with a baggage car, transition sleeper, sleeping car, dining car, sightseer lounge, superliner coach car with business class seating, and standard coach cars. This train would only be able to operate on the south line as the train terminates at Seattle King Street Station and doesn't go on the north line. Both the P42DC and Dash 8 use K5L Lavehorns. Both of them are slightly different, however. They also use a bell I do not know the name of. Here is a sample of their sounds. The only downside to this being added is there would only be two timetables as the train only does one round trip every two days. The outbound train departs Seattle at 9.45am and the inbound train arrives a day later at 7.56pm. This would mean there would only be two services on timetable mode. There's one other way these two locomotives could be used as DLC that I will discuss in a moment. Amtrak Cascades is a passenger train that travels from Eugene, Oregon to Vancouver, Canada. Its total route distance is 467 miles and stops a total of 18 times. Cascades does operate along both the north and south lines. On the south line, Cascades stops at Tacoma, Tukwila, and Seattle. On the north line, the train stops at Seattle, Edmonds, and Everett. The main fleet on Cascades is made out of the Siemens SC44 Charger, a non-powered EMD F40PH, a Talgo cab car, the P42 DC, and Dash 8. The P42 and Dash 8 are used primarily as secondary locomotives on the other side of the Cascades consist, if not using a cab car. For the F40PH, they could also add a special Seattle Seahawks livery as seen on Amtrak 90250, which would be super cool. As it's Amtrak, all trains use K5L lay horns. The Charger and the Talgo cab cars use the same K5L lay you would hear on the ACS-64 on Northeast Corridor. The non-powered F40PH, P42DC, and Dash 8 all use different K5L lay models. Here's a sample of their sounds. I will not include the P42 and Dash 8 in sound samples as I have already shown them.
On the north line, two trains operate between Vancouver and Seattle. On the south line, three trains operate between Seattle and Portland, and three trains operate between Seattle and Eugene. Lastly, two trains operate on both lines between Vancouver and Portland. This would add up to a total of four trains operating on the north line and eight trains operating on the south line. It would make the mo more sense to go with the south line as there are double the timetables on that line. If the Coast Starlight also gets added, they can implement timetables for both locomotives for even more to do with the, both the Cascades and the P-42 in Dash 8. Sounder would make for a fantastic addition to Train Some World 2. The route has scenery like no other along with having a very solid fleet of locomotives and rolling stock. There are also lots of possibilities for DLC from more passenger action with Amtrak to more freight action with operators like BNSF and Union Pacific. If I was to choose which route I would like to see get added first, I would choose the South Line. The line is longer, has more stops, longer trains, more services, and breathtaking scenery. Although the North Line has, a, has very nice views of the Washington coast, there are less stops along the line, shorter consists, and less services. Again, it is sheer preference on what route you would prefer since the scenery is different. This route would bring lots of new things to the table. It feels different enough than Peninsula Corridor with its different collection of locomotives and astounding scenery. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you would like me to cover an American route you would like to see get added, feel free to post a suggestion and I may do it in the future. I encourage you to check out my other Train Sim World 2 content. I do live streams very often and love making liveries for you guys. If you would like to stay updated for this kind of content, hit the like button and subscribe for more content. It really helps out the channel and makes me want to make more content for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video. See you guys!